Well, this should be streaming. We're trying out a new new system here. Oops, I didn't want to do that, did I? Let's see. How well this is working yet? So let's just see. Hang on. Streaming is there. That's good. All right, so that's working. Okay, excellent. Um, which camera am I? On? I'm this one right now. Okay, hey guys, it's Tom for Inspiration My Lords. I uh, today we're doing a live stream from the shop. Uh, hair's all mess. Sunday morning. I'm just completely wiped out, but having a little fun with this anyways. So, um, as you see, I'm wearing my, my Bar Z shirt for today. Uh, this is a kind of a dry run to see how things might work for live streaming at the Bar Z Industrial Summer Bash. So, um, what I'm working on right now is, uh, you guys really can't see it here, but I'll come this way. I've got the lathe here, and... Um, Next thing that I'm working on is working on the collet uh, collet closer. I did uh, I did go ahead and order the parts to do a conversion to a pneumatic closer. Um, that uh, um, Patrick from uh, from G Made CNC did a great series. Um, in the recording, I'll see if I can put a link up for it. Um, but really, in this live uh, session. I'm not expecting any interaction at this point, uh, although I could turn some of those things on. But right now, we're not doing it. Um, we might turn some of that on uh, for the for the live event, but we're going to do some testing uh, between now and then. So let's um, let's switch camera angles, and we'll we'll take a look here. So I'm going to. Okay, so now I'm on uh, camera two here, right? So I went from my my built-in camera on the laptop to the uh, to the Logitech camera up, up top here. So hopefully everything's still working okay for everybody. Um, I'm kind of switching back and forth uh, on this. It looks like it's watching. It looks like there's actually even a couple of people watching, which is interesting. All right. Well, if you're watching, uh, feel free to uh, say something in the chat. But, um, again, this is just kind of a, a test stream to see how things are working. One of the things that I, I, um, I put in is you can see you could put a, a watermark for a, a, a channel logo. So for Stan, um, we'll put your Bar Z Industrial logo up there. Uh, you'll see I've got mine. Um, another neat thing that we can do here is these little, you should have seen a little thing slide in. Um, so for sponsors, we can... Uh, we can have this automatically cycling sponsors logos. So um, that's kind of a neat uh, little setup here too. And this doesn't take a whole lot of time to, to do. I, the tool I'm using for this today is called um, Nemo Live. It is a Mac only tool, so um, you know, I'll be using my Mac laptop for that. But uh, yeah, so let's. I'm gonna keep this session running for a little bit because I wanna check how the audio is doing. I'm using the built-in audio on the, the Laptop, the built-in mic on the laptop. I might switch that to the built-in uh, mic on the, the camera itself, or maybe even uh, a lavalier mic that we would plug in. We're still, still working on some of these things. Uh, so thanks for your patience, everybody. So let's take a look. Where are we right now with the lathe? So um, the lathe is together. It's mostly assembled. Um, we've got. I don't know, yeah, you can. You just barely see it. The turret changer is in place, uh, or the turret tool changer is in place. So we do have an eight position uh, tool changer in here. It's in place, but it's not shimmed or adjusted yet, but it does work. Um, I'm able to, to do a you know, T6M, or sorry, T whatever, T, not T tool number blank M6, and it you know, will go ahead and, and automatically adjust. So that, that part's working. Um, I spun the, the spindle up. I started it in this has got the low the low speed um, pulley on it uh, from the factory. I, I haven't swapped pulleys yet. 
Uh, so the lowest speed you can do is 180 RPM. I let it run like that for two, three hours, and uh, the spindle never even got warm. So everything was good with that. Uh, I did ramp it up to its full 2,500 RPMs, and it smooths to be. Um, at 180 RPM, you could actually hear the encoder, the spindle encoder, uh, clicking a little bit, which I was a little unnerved by it, but uh, my, my mentor, so Marty, he said, it's good, don't worry about it, it's normal. So I'm taking his word for it. Um, in doing all of this stuff, I actually already had to take some of the, uh, the covers off for um, the dry belt system. Uh, the, obviously, we want to make sure that you're not getting your fingers caught in any of this. So you've got the main drive belt system here, and then the spindle encoder. And this is the actual spindle encoder uh, over here at this point. Um, I'm going to turn the advertising thing off there. All right, so that's not going to keep popping up anymore. That was just for just for showing guys, just a, a sample there. Um, let's see. So the documentation, and so far the documentation uh, coming from the Tormach has been really good. I know it's, I got sun coming in right here, so most of this will get blown out, but the, the documentation has been, been pretty good. Came with it, you can also get it, uh, get updated versions on their website from the support, pit, uh, support site. It's been fine. This is saying, yeah, James Green, all right, interrupting my live stream and everything. Um, so this says the, the colic closer comes with the following. You get a, the closer, the index ring adapter assembly, a handle, six M6 socket head screws, and six lock, lock washers. Required tools, they want you to have a magnetic dial indicator, so you can get everything lined up um, with the spindle, a hacksaw or bandsaw, and then a dead blow hammer. Um, I'm guessing, and I'm just guessing now, so I haven't looked at the directions yet, I'm guessing that saw is to um, is actually to to uh, cut down the all thread the X for the actuated uh, portion of this, and um, again, like I said earlier, I did order all the um, the parts from both uh, Automation Direct and McMaster, the parts that's straight off uh, G made CNC's um, off his. Uh, series that he did for his uh, collar closer, and he's saying that that it's been working great so far. You know, and if he had any problems, he would immediately you know, put a video off. But I think he did that several months ago now, and he's been been happy with it. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Patrick's uh, site, you should do that. It's like I said, it's G made CNC, and um, but he does have have all the information there, including a list with all the part numbers, everything that you need to take this manual collar closer and make it into a, a pneumatic collar closer. So um, the Tormach controller does have a, uh, it has an outlet for uh, a power outlet for a collar closer and it's supported through uh, Pathpilot. Um, I do not know at this point how to actually turn it on and off other than pressing the button on the screen. Um, I'm sure there's some G code in there that I'll, I'll have to learn, but uh, it's it's there. So, collar closer, bar puller, and uh, you know, make the thing uh, get this thing to where it's making parts without you having to uh, babysit it, right? So that's the plan. Um, directions, of course, the mandatory section one. Turn it off. I actually unplugged it, so I can move some stuff out of the way. Um, so remove the panel attached to the back. So some of this stuff, like I said. Because I'm getting this whole system together, as opposed to adding something new um, on the way, actually, you know what, I'm going to change this camera angle just a little bit, guys. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we get too much glare off my bald spot there, guys. But, um, you know, since I was getting all of this at one time, um, getting the, you know, the lay, the enclosure, all this. I actually had to take some of these things off already. So uh, I'm doing a few things out of order, but I'm, or out of order from the perspective of the directions. But 
I decided that it didn't make any sense to take the stuff, take the cover off, and then put everything back on, and then oh yeah, take it off again because I've got to put the collet uh, on, and the uh, do it again when I put the pneumatic actuator on. Right, so for right now I'm breaking the law, breaking the rules. See how many of you get that airworm stuck in your, your head now. Um, and I am not I'm not running the, the system with all the covers in place. Because I know I'm just gonna have to take them right back off. Um, I did release a video yesterday about uh, kind of a status update on getting the, the machine put together. Um, and a few of the uh, a few of the things that I ran into along the way that you should be aware of. What I didn't know, and what I've heard from some people who have these uh, these lathes, is I have I guess Tormach changed the um, I guess they changed the design. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of a lot of glare in it. Sorry about that. Uh, but I guess Tormach changed the design of the uh, the turret. Let me check in on, on chat. I don't know if anybody's actually... Yeah. Wow, there's six people watching now. Interesting. Um, yeah, so... Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. But, anyways, Tormox changed the design on the turret. And, apparently, I've got the new design. Um, I'm not sure... I've got to go back and do some research and find out what changed and why they, why they made the changes. Um, my understanding is that uh, some of it had to do with getting you know, sensors correct, uh, but I don't, I really don't know what the change is. So if you do know, um, either send a chat message in there, put a comment in. You know, this will show up as a recording as well. So um, you can put a comment uh, in the in the comment box. However, when I do that, but um, yeah, so. If you know what those changes are, I've, I've got to do research anyways, but if you can point me in the right direction before I get started and so I don't waste my time, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, okay, so, got all the covers off. So this this cover here, just so you guys see it, right? this is the cover. I'm just going to have to take the encoder cable off here, I can see that. Since I did have the machine running, I had to plug the encoder back in. Okay. But this actually sits here. Right, to cover all the belts. So it's basically the belt guard. Now when the collar closer goes in place, obviously it has to go through here. There's an actuator piece, right? The um, the pneumatic part will come through this section over here. So let me turn this sideways so you guys can see what that looks like. So, main spindle bore here, right? And so this uh, the spindle itself has uh, has screws on there that you put the the collet closer assembly on the part that spins, right? And you've got, that's why we need the dial indicator so we can get that concentric. Uh, when we get the pneumatic actuator, its arm will come through here because the collet closer basically comes out. There's a you know, the the part that you tighten up. Right? And then there's a lever that you actuate on the side. The pneumatic part will actually do that actuation for you. Um, the spindle encoder comes through here. There's actually a little half moon, little half moon cover that goes in place to, to help um, you know, keep things from falling into the, uh, the motor area as well as keep fingers out of uh, moving areas. Uh, I have to look. I'm not certain what this part is for. I'm assuming it is part of the uh, part of the collet closer locking mechanism. Yes, that's probably for the pivot itself. But so we'll see. But that's that's this step. We've been online for I don't know ten minutes. The whole idea on this test, and let's go back to. Go back to our other camera angle. Okay, 
for the, the whole idea of this test today really is to uh, prep for the, the bar Z um, uh, live stream. Randy, oh, so Randy's on, okay. <laughs> nice, Mark, Mike's doing good. Uh, Byron, awesome, so you're on too. This is awesome. Okay, so it's, not only is it people watching, but it's people that I know that are watching, which is even better. Um, cool. Uh, what do you guys think so far? There, there is a delay, right? So that's one of the things that we have to do uh, when we're live streaming is there's a, a buffering delay. So I say things, it's going to be about 30 seconds or so before you guys hear it, and then there's a delay on things coming back. Um, yeah, that is kind of funny, right? So, so now you can see. So you saw how long it took for you to type that to me to reply because I'm, I'm watching your portion of it live right now. Um, but that's also how we're going to have to deal with some of the, the uh, bandwidth out at Stan's place, right? So uh, I, I might be bringing some you know, heavy-duty Wi-Fi equipment out there with us just to, uh, to help uh, with, with uh, making sure we get a good connection. But I think, I think the plan right now is that I'm going to handle what he's been calling the podcast, but it's, it's a live stream, right? So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage that. Kind of like, yeah, exactly, like the satellite phone stuff for, like, you know, when I was, um, gosh, when I was in the Army, you had that, the FM, you know, where, you, where it takes time for the signal to bounce back and forth, right? So, um, exact same kind of thing. So, your, your long-range uh, ship-to-shore radios were, were the same way, right? Uh, okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the stream for right now. It's, it's been 15, 16 minutes. If we were going to have some audio issues like I'd had in the past with uh, the different streaming servers that I've used here in the shop, we would have had it by now. They had they hit really fast, and uh, so if everything seems to be looking okay, if uh, audio sync, so my lips and the sound are moving at the same time, if all that's looking good, I'm going to go ahead. Ah, Stan just uh, <laughs> stands actually. Um, Sending me notes on, on Facebook right now, too. Uh, Wi-Fi booster disconnection. Yeah, okay, so Randy, that's exactly what I'm going to do is um, I've, got, uh, I've got basically some industrial-grade uh, Wi-Fi that I can plug into his uh, wired network that um, when, I, when I use that uh, in field settings, it, you know, it's good for you know, seven, eight hundred feet. Um, at, at really, you know, really good uh, connectivity. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to wrap this one up, though. Uh, thanks for the feedback. We'll probably be doing this more often. Um, I actually intend to try and start doing this on a regular basis out here. Uh, I, I started doing these things about six months ago and then just let it you know, drop for, for quite a while because, frankly, uh, I got tired of chasing a bunch of the issues, but now that I've got this new tool to do the broadcasting, I think, uh, I think we're in good shape. So, thanks guys, appreciate it, appreciate the feedback, and uh, for a couple of you, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks.